team, which until very recently was based in the cabinet office, we've just spun off for a mutual organisation, which is a legal structure about which we don't care, so I'm not going to dwell on that particularly. Um, so I think what my job essentially entails is running field experiments across a range of policy areas, everything from charitable giving to crime, which you might have to um, through to uh, international development, to economic growth, to education, to a whole range of other things. So we've got a lot of field experiments. We don't run any lab experiments, so I've got a lot of dreaded field experiments uh, that I was talking about. Um, I'm just going to start this talk by saying any questions that I fail to answer in this talk will be answered by the next speaker. Um, so <laughs>
Advantage of free experiments is that they're more real than the cost. Which means when I say we're going to this will double donations, it actually did double donations on the day to, we went to the charity and we're generally getting a substantially larger amount. Um, I don't really understand who uses mechanical turf because I wouldn't do anything for 10 things for 10 cents. So we're generally dealing with real stakes or larger stakes. Obviously people are real. So that's the, the advantage of open The disadvantage and the reason why these things are unpleasant to run is we give up a great deal of control. If I had a lab, I would love to have a lab, I don't. If anyone's going to buy it, don't buy me one and then run Make a donation. Um, if I had a lab, I'd be able to control the entire environment. If I'm doing field studies, I need to try and control the real world, which is a deeply messy thing, even if you're in government. Sometimes it feels like a special. And that means that it is much more difficult for us to isolate a particular cause and change. Which is why, that is me, me, me trying to be a very broad church person. We need all kinds of doctors, even though I'm feeling kind of so, yes, that's the pitch. So, I'm going to just go through these four things. I'm particularly fond of the fact that when you don't display these on widescreen screen, the E, <laughs> the attractive, ends up on the other. Any one of those other words would be more or less okay for the image to have been ruined, but that one, yeah, not very. So, I apologize for that. I blame my branding people, not my branding people, my branding people, the company who are to So, first of all, we're going to talk about tax collections. I want to get a the best, most juicy stuff out of the way first. This is not making things easy. So, as I said before, lots of people pay their tax late. Um, and if you don't pay your tax late, you get fired. I'm just going to move away from the microphone. Can you all still hear me? Excellent. Raise your hand if you can't. No? No one's got a sense of humor. Good. <laughs> so, about a million people don't pay their tax on time. And what we do is we send them a letter, or rather HMRC sends them a letter saying, you haven't paid your tax, would you mind thinking about doing that now? And eventually everyone's going to get around to doing it, but every time we interact with them, every time we write them a letter, or send them a letter, or give them a phone call, or send the tax letter to their house, that's the money it's costing the government. It's also money that we don't have, which they're supposed to have paid by. So we send them this letter, these letters are essentially identical, but they are identical except for the link which is in it. So we send you a paper letter, we say go to this website, which is a very government way of thinking, because we don't have anyone's email addresses. Why would we? Still the 19th century, right? <laughs> no? No. Oh. Anyway. We sent so you two links. One link sends you to a web page that tells you about tax. Which most of you know about tax already. It tells you about the kind of tax you haven't paid yet. It tells you about why you should be paying it. It tells you how you can pay it. And the way you pay it, the way at the bottom of that page on the right hand side it tells you to pay your tax, is to go to this online form and fill it in. Now we've sent all of the information about the fact that you owe tax. That's in the letter which we've sent you and which you've read, otherwise you wouldn't be at the web page. So instead of sending you to a web page, why don't we send you straight to the form we want you to fill in? So we're removing what is essentially the tiniest little bit of friction. What we're in the top, in our control group, what you're required to do is reach to the bottom of a web page, having already read a letter, and then click a second click. Very, very small amount of friction. In terms of your amount of time, it's nothing. You can basically get an enter and do this for free. Or for like point one of the set. The bottom one sends you directly. Nice and simple. Okay, what happens? Well, I wouldn't be here telling you about it, but good. So, if we send you straight to the 19.2% of people sign up, as in they go on to the website and they pay their taxes within two weeks. So this is before we have to send them another letter. They shouldn't have walked so far away. If we send them directly to the form, that goes up by 23 points. <laughs> filling the tax in on time, or with it before we send them the next letter. This sounds nothing, like it's a very small effect, four percentage points, who cares about that? Well, you know, it's a couple of million pounds, extra bought in a little bit sooner. And you know what they say, a million pounds here, a million pounds there, soon we're going to start to add up to real money. So that's essentially why we think we should make things easy. We're removing these very, very small, very tiny frictions while processing, and almost every process which has been designed by a committee of lawyers which is almost every process a managed government engaged in will have these sources of completely unnecessary friction. We now have committees in HMRC in response to the fact that there are... So all these things are by committees have these deep flaws, they're too complicated, so what HMRC has done in order to resolve this problem is they set up a committee, the purpose of which is to remove <coughs> friction from stuff. So we have, yeah, an extra committee. Sort of taking the 
letter of the law there, not really the spirit of the message. So how about things making attractive E? That's the, that's the big lesson next. Okay. So it's not about giving in the workplace. I wonder that's under attractiveness because I think it belongs there. So giving in the workplace is sort of underutilised. I apologise to people who work for PGAs, who I've just met, and I've become a bit of, you're going to hate me already, never mind. Anyway. So workplace giving is underutilised. Sort of, the government has tried to reform it several times. I'm not going to make any kind of comment on that. Leave you guys to draw your own conclusions about my views on it. I know you all have your own views. So parent giving is underutilised. We'd like it to happen more. And so we went down to try and get it to happen in a workplace. Rather well, than trying to go through the traditional government route of, hey, let's legislate, let's have an advertising campaign, let's have a consultation that is essentially just a whitewash job. Not that we would ever do that. So it's not payroll giving. Anyway. Um, it's a very niche inside baseball joke about payroll giving, sorry. Um, well, is we went out to a large investment bank and we asked these investment bankers, about 7,000 of them, to donate a day's salary to charity. So we're now dealing with, we're in the real world, so we're dealing with real stakes. The average donation I observe in my sample is about £515, which means you can work out from that how much investment bankers get paid. But my sample isn't really very realistic. They're not, I can't really claim that 7,000 investment bankers are more like a real human being than a few hundred students at UCSD, because they're actually probably not the same people, eventually. <laughs> Maybe not San Diego. Half the students all go on the other investment bankers. I don't know what any UCSD students do, so... Right. Okay. So, you probably back to okay. This amount of money is as trivial as it sounds. Because we are talking about quite a lot of money. So we sent some people some emails because, unlike the rest of the government, we have discovered that the 21st century has happened. Well, the investment bank has told us about emails, which we're very happy about. <laughs> so we sent them an email from the CEO of their bank on the day of this fundraising campaign. We're asking them to donate a day's salary to charity, the two charity, the Ministry of Research and Health Account for the Child. We're sending them this email from the CEO's email account. It's obviously said automated, he doesn't have anything to do with it, but he's agreed to let it happen. And half the people receive an email which says, Dear colleague, Please donate a day salary to charity, and the other half have one which says Dear Sarah, unless that name isn't Sarah, when substitute the first name of the person in. This is a very, this is essentially a costless intervention. All you need to do is just merge two databases together. The next thing we do is we have some suites and some volunteers. So we have some people who work in business units, these are essentially closed units in which they work and do their jobs as investment bankers, whatever that happens to entail. And we have 63 of these units, and some of them. When you arrive in work on the day of the campaign, you're greeted by a volunteer who is, as you all know, a, a standard charitable giving volunteer. They're wearing a t-shirt, branded with the campaign's information, they're young, they're smiley, they're happy, and they're enthusiastic about charitable giving. And they give them a flyer which tells them about the campaign and all the extras <coughs> we're raising money for. So this is what a volunteer looks like, in case some of you have ever seen a human being wearing a t-shirt before. This is fun. Had enough of that? Yeah, okay. In other business units, these same volunteers, well, literally the same people, but essentially identical volunteers, instead of giving you out flyers, they were giving out sweets. These sweets came in small packets. I'll just show you a picture of them. This is a, packet of, a picture of a packet of sweets. These are skittles. They cost us about £1.50 to buy because we had to pay for the branding and the special packaging. If you actually wanted to buy these sweets, you could wander down to the nearest Tesco. It's about 50p for that volume of sweets. Bearing in mind who my sample are here. They are investment bankers, so if you talk to them at length, which I don't recommend, they will tell you about how hyper-rational they are, about how their job calls them to be really quantitative, really clever. And so there's no way this treatment's going to have any effect. Simply what I'm trying to do here is induce some sense of reciprocity in them. They can give them a very small gift in exchange, which I want them to give a much larger gift to charity. And that's never, this is never going to work, because these guys, are, as I said, they're hyper-smart, hyper-rational. They're not going to fall for this kind of simple bag of behavioralist tricks. Finally, we're sitting around celebrities. I use this term under advisement. None of you have ever heard of them, probably. Um, they are, so we have two Paralympic athletes who we send around uh, and they go around the building and we have two DJs for Capital FM. So maybe some of you may have heard of them, but they're not super famous. We don't have Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt going around endorsing our charity. But they're travelling around these buildings and we're randomly choosing where they go next. In advance, obviously, but they, the order is random. So this is, these are our interventions, and I'm going to show you what the results are. So in our control group, we managed to get just under 2%. This is so small a percent that my graph doesn't even look good. Agreed to make a donation to charity. It's actually 1.7%. So 
This is, you know, this is a, small, a good amount of money we started to raise. Because each donation is worth, as I said, more than £500 in the bank account. So this is all excellent. When we have celebrities going around, we have 4% people on that. So a little bit more, a little bit better. They're still not very good, but again, we are these people we've heard of. How about, so, just, I haven't put the volunteers on here. The reason I put the volunteers on here is because the volunteers line is exactly the same as this one. Volunteers by themselves with flyers have absolutely no effect. They can be as slowly and happy as you like, and they don't seem to have any effect at all. This is quite a precisely estimated theory. When we give people sweets, however, these hyper-rational, hyper-cool individuals who don't care about sweets, who aren't going to fool for my tricks, these guys, basically four times as many of them, not quite as many, actually start to make a donation. When we send them a personalised email from the CEO, and I think this is mostly going for the reading thing. So if you see an email, you see, when it comes up, you see the first few words. If it says, dear colleague from the CEO, you probably just put it in the bit. If it says, dear colleague, dear Dave, and it's from the CEO, maybe you read it in case you're fired or promoted or getting an extra big bonus. So what happens there? Most people read it. Or some people read it, please. And we get many more people than it. If we have both of these things, we get still more people than it. So this is a, these are pretty good, pretty happy results. I like them. So these are, we can go from 2% roughly to 13% roughly of investment bankers making a donation of £500, pounds, which is quite a lot of money, just by doing some very simple things. These things don't cost a great deal. The return on investment is excellent. And we make more than £500,000 in a single day. So that's pretty good. Next talk, you have making.